Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Keith Cartwright, and I am the director writer of Flat Cap Man. I have with me Graham Dillon. Hello. Who is the uh, director of photography, and I also have Mark Cartwright. Hello. Or credited as Mark Jackson. Yes. So it's been 10 years, boys, since we produced Flat Cap Man. How are we feeling? <laughs> Reminiscent. It like it doesn't seem that long ago, and then it really does feel that long ago. It's one of those weird things where it's like, uh, ah, yeah. yeah, that was like last year or something. And you're like, oh shit, no, actually, it was a long time <laughs> yeah, ago. A long time ago. <laughs> so we just give a brief history of how we all came together on this. Mark, I know our story is fairly easy because we are kin. <laughs> uh huh. We suckled at the same teeth. So, yeah, that's how I came to know you, was that seven, six years after you were born, I was born. Yes. <laughs> it's um, felt like an entire lifetime. Mm-hmm. And we'll continue. <laughs> and then, uh, Graham? Well, I was uh, born from a, a different lady. But, um, <laughs> we came together uh, through university. Um, I somehow blagged my way into uh, University of Wolverhampton and uh, uh, I happened to be in a wheelchair at the time and I wheeled myself into uh, Keith's class, handed out uh, business cards with a very strange Irish uh, mobile phone number and uh, (laughs) (laughs) I got a lot of questions about is this a real number? Are you just like, what's going on here? But yeah, that's that's how we uh, became kin. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'd say it was like it was like over the course of making this was like considering you know you had three or four other people from your college who were yeah. also working on it. It's like the bond that we like we made with Graham has been there ever since. You know where well, we have we, we worked on several projects since, and we? we've done yeah. a couple of music videos. Mark, you've been over to help Graham with the Comic Cons, and and you would have done had the uh, had the world not gone a bit mad. Yeah. I think it was like two yeah. days after I'd got my emergency passport because I'd left let it run out, and then everything was locked down. And I was like, I could have saved that, yeah. <laughs> but it's ready for next time. Yeah, exactly. That's the important bit. <laughs> Right, so what I was thinking on this for the um, watch along director director of photography star commentary. Oh, yeah, I like star. Let's go with <coughs> star. star. It's definitely me and not Will. <laughs> <laughs> Which Will? So, uh, but what I was thinking is, as we go along, I'll pause if I've got anything to say. If you guys want to shout out about anything, I can stop it. We'll talk about different bits and pieces and go from there. This will be the longest 10 minutes. <laughs> By the time we're like, oh, pause that, pause that. Right, so here we go. The Adventures of Flat Cap Man. Ooh. Terrible logo. Do you want to pause it? <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. Overpaid Productions. Can I ask where you got the name Overpaid Productions? Pause so, it because this is a long explanation. So yeah, um, Overpaid Monkey was the initial start of my video production life, I'd, I'd say. Me and my mates used to do some mock jackass style stuff. I stayed behind the camera and wrote a bit more. So I was doing that side and I got interested in it that way. And it was just a case of when I started to try and take things a bit more seriously, it was like, well, overpaid monkey is a bit... So we'll leave the monkey off, but overpaid productions sounded send quite cool. It was like, oh, you're too overpaid for what you're actually doing. It's like, well, we're not getting paid at all, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's like, it sounds like, um, you know, like those 90s rap labels where it's like cash money. And so it sounds like that kind of overpaid production. It's great, though, because I just love the juxtaposition of the fact that so much of your work has been underpaid. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. (laughs) And uh, in fact, not budgeted at all. (laughs) (laughs) And that's why on the logo as well. That, that awful pink logo that comes up at the beginning. That originally <laughs> said the overpaid monkey, and that's why there's like the outline of a monkey on it. It's like an orangutan or a man searching for toilet roll while he squats. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the film. Back to the film. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, film. let's just start it again from here because we're going to get quite a few introductions. There's yeah. me. 
So where does no the name Cartwright come from? <laughs> <laughs> so we whipped past everybody that was starring in the film then in that one go. So we had Will Morgan, who was Flat Cat Man. Will Dudley, who was the, the grandson, Jack. Caroline Dudley was um, Will's mom, his actual mom. Caroline. Caroline, sorry. Oh, in uh, real life, she was his real mom. Yeah, yeah, surprise. Oh, yeah. That's cool. And then, who else was on there? Sorry, I can't remember. Mitch Lockett which, uh, was that Mitch guy Lockett. that I went and picked up from the train station. He got off like Craigslist or something. <laughs> he came from uh, one of the uh, casting agents things that you can get online, Star thing. Because or... you had to like, part of your thing was that you had to have hired an actor for it or something yeah. like that, wasn't it? Yeah, part yes. of your course. Yeah. Will Morgan, Black Cat Man, he was uh, from Amateur Dramatics. He'd done that previously. Professional the entire time, though. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And a true gent. Yeah, Will, Will was fantastic. He, he helped. He, you know, he should be actually down as a producer for the film, the amount of <laughs> things that he actually did. 100%. Absolutely. And then, as we can see here, Graham, you're getting your name mentioned. Director of photography. Did you not do these graphics as well for the yeah, intros? Did. I did. That's why they're spelt wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, I've no. just noticed photography is spelt wrong. <laughs> Edited by Graham Dillon as well. I did. <laughs> 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 okay. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are there any more spelling oh. mistakes that you can spot? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and keep them to myself. <laughs> oh, fuck. I like this. I, I love the um, typewriter uh, scene. It was a pleasure to record. Mm. Because it was like just lots of simple shapes, and I don't know, there's something about the sound of a typewriter I find very peaceful as well. That it was one of the things that was on the top of the script. It says the sound of a typewriter fills the air because yeah. a lot of the film itself is based on memories and interactions that I'd had with my own grandparents, especially my granddad himself, same as Mark. Uh, and he was always a, a writer, or he'd always had the typewriter out. Yeah, and the fo- the folders stacked up like Grandad had lots of folders of poems and stories and stuff that he'd written over the years as well. So that's like a a real detail as well as some of the some of the photos that are actually in that intro as well. They're yes. like photos actually of like my Grandad from uh, Second World War, I believe it was. Yeah. Let's quickly jump back. So. Two locations. Yes. Oh, look, there you are, Mark. There's you in the background. There's me. Tell us more about these two locations, because... Uh... That you see it here, this transition as Will walks yeah. in. So, it, so the exterior was shot at my other grand uh, grandmother's house, which was just like the little bungalow, but all the interior stuff was shot at uh, my mom's house. Again, yeah, easy, my house at the yeah, time. Yeah, easy access. Uh, something that I could use for eight, nine weeks or something like that without any extra costs. <laughs> and it's like, it's a lot easier to go in and completely rearrange a middle-aged woman's house who loves you unconditionally. Yep than it is to go in and completely rearrange an old lady's house. You're like, I'm just going to lay this track down in the middle of your living room. Please don't trip over <laughs> it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah. much easier to have the nice aesthetic of, of a bungalow, sell the idea of yeah. a bungalow. But then if you're going to, te- you know, not tear someone's house up, but if you're going to like completely rearrange someone's living room, probably best not to do that to an old lady. <laughs> yeah. Your mother was so on board, even when you wanted to take that wall down. That was... <laughs> <laughs> but for but in all seriousness, we did spend a lot of time lifting very heavy furniture yeah. and completely rearranging uh, the room. 
we'd um, change the room for the weekend and then we'd have to put it back for normality come <laughs> Sunday, Sunday afternoon, something like that. That's right, that's right. And it's funny that we've paused on this particular couch because <laughs> I called that couch home many a night uh, <laughs> during production. <laughs> I think this couch has followed me around for most of my life. When when I finally got rid of it, I took a saw to it and took it apart. <laughs> I was like, no more. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so there we go. Will sitting down. Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. I love the Easter egg of the uh, angry Nintendo nerd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye, Jack. That's what it was always called. Do you want to drink a pop? Nothing else was ever um, offered. It was pop. And <laughs> um, and my mate, like my mate, yeah. is uh, and we sort of because you you'd written it down as my mate, and then we had to sort of coach Will that it's like no, like Granddad was from Salford, so it was my mate. It was like uh, it was more colloquial. <laughs> yeah, and it. it, it, it it took him a while, but once he actually got it and then he knew it, how yeah. to hit that kind of phraseology afterwards. Well, we're coming up to the end. He, he's your favourite shot, Graham. Right? <laughs> yeah. This was, oh my goodness, the amount of time we spent on this shot. It was needless. It was like... <laughs> it was pointless. I, I just wanted it. I just wanted the visual. It's what I'd got yeah. in my head. I was like, yeah, that's what I wanted. It's, like, it's almost as if the games console is staring at the child going, play me. <laughs> yeah. I've since actually done, <laughs> looked at loads of scenes and how they've done it. And a lot of the times they'll actually get the props department to make an oversized zipper yeah. to put over the hood of a camera instead of what we did, which was just shove a camera inside of a bag. <laughs> <laughs> did that work? No, we need to go again, sound folks. <laughs> It's a Tarantino shot. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you originally wanted like an even older telly, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Like so initially in my head, I'd got it as um, would be like what you'd have, like almost like a wooden veneer on the on the TV yeah. itself, uh, where you just have, you wouldn't even have like scar connections. It was just the aerial and the power lead. Maybe sometime we uh, in the future, you could have this entire movie remade uh, as an animation. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> get all those little bits added, like an almost- George, uh, George Lucas the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Never tie fighter, just to zoom in the background. <laughs> But imagine, imagine those things just flying through there and having like an almost uh, <laughs> trench run style. Saying that though, on the shot that you've currently paused yep. it on, yep. there is a special effect. I should know what it is, but do you want to <laughs> <laughs> enlighten us? Enlighten us. That little, oh. red, that little tiny red light at the back there, because the because it was on because it was playing music, and then the yes. light was off, and I was like, oh, crap. So I ended up having to edit it in. So sometimes you'll see that the red light crosses onto <laughs> to his arm. <laughs> oh, no. It's fine. You don't. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. No, I can't unsee it. I thought that was just something on my screen. <laughs> it's a great delivery. That I beg your pardon. <laughs> I love how well-groomed Will's beard always was. It was an immaculate. We got we got a uh, makeup in to do with their beard for him, if you remember. They put it on all individually, individual hairs. <laughs> That's right. It, it took three hours every morning just to get Will's beard uh, <laughs> on. And... Five thousand pounds per strand of hair. Like when I said, oh yeah, absolutely, every strand. 
I mean, you can see later on when we've had to like just paint it on ourselves for background shots. <laughs> yeah. This also, this was what what he's about to do now, uh, like a granddad thing where he'd have one set of glasses and he'd have to swap. <laughs> swap in between the two pairs of glasses and that that's all the way through the film as well. I hope to, uh, Nintendo don't come after you. Uh... <laughs> I'm promoting them like the DS. <laughs> that's, that's always how they see it. There you go. Generations apart. Analog and digital. <laughs> so here you go. Here, here's a mistake. There's no batteries. <laughs> That's you an artistic know. license. I wouldn't say yeah, it's a mistake. It's a metaphor like for the... life. There's, <laughs> there's no batteries. There's no batteries. <laughs> I like the shot of him walking over his homework. Like, fuck this. Yeah, that, that was the purpose of it as well. Like, I can't be bothered to do this now. And also, this as well, though, this was something that I would used to do where I'd just sit next to my granddad and just go, what yeah. are you doing? Tell me what you're doing. Wow. That's very cute. I'm just absolutely enraptured in uh, Will. Both of the I mean, Will was awesome. Uh, so this is going to get confusing. So I'll go over. Flat Cat Man was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Or we, we sort of codenamed them Little Will and Big Will. It wasn't until Will Smith put in that other lawsuit... Um. <laughs> I've got to start proofreading more I think is the issue that we have <laughs> Lucky, I, I can't say anything about proofreading <laughs> <laughs> always have a measure twice cut once uh, attitude to title right? <laughs> I like that there's a little bit of aggravation in yeah, that, like frustration like type. come on you should, you've yeah. got stuff to do but also realising, you know, grandkids are grandkids. I like that. Again, yeah. that's the trailer line, isn't it? Have I ever told, told you about, about Black Cat Man? Man? Story time. So that, like, how many how many adventures does Flat Cat Man have? See, you, I see all these folders there. Is there a chance of future Flat Cat I believe adventures? so. I, I, I'm working... I'm keeping the, keeping the uh, the cards to my chest at the minute, but I, I have got some ideas and things that I'm exploring currently. Uh, at the end of the film, we see a, a, the title for a new possible adventure, full of Easter eggs as well, that one is. But I just pause it here for now, because uh, Storytime with Grandad, just something that I always used to enjoy, where I'd read stories or we'd, We'd go on little adventures or something because he used to have a big garden, so we'd go out in the garden. Mark also did the same similar thing. So where I'd when I was older and I was school, but Mark was being looked after, he he'd get the same kind of things. Yeah, and some some little details about this. So that's a picture of our actual nan and granddad on the edge of the fireplace. That's uh, the man that this is sort of loosely based on there as a young you know as a younger man. Next to that is a picture of all our aunties and uncles yeah. who were the children of that uh, nan and granddad. Then there's Will as a young boy. Then next to that, they're behind, it's like a candle or something. But the, uh, it's, Is it Will's cup? Uh, no, it's it, it is a candle. There's a picture of our nan and then a sympathy card. And we were sort of trying to set up the idea that Will's wife may have recently died or, you know... And that was why the grandson would visit more because it was keeping it was keeping both of them company. Oh, that makes so much more sense. I thought it was just sorry you're old. <laughs> <laughs> and then the bookshelf is loads of my books just with the dust covers taken off. So yeah. they're, they're like, you know, they're not the sort of books an older man would have, but they were just the best we could do. <laughs> In short and, sort of notice. The uh, the lamp behind Will is like pink polka dots or something. No, it was and that's pink what... leopard skin. That's it. 
and that's why it's covered with like a shawl or something just so it fits in the the error but yeah it was uh, a bit too flamboyant for an old man <laughs> um and then i'm just thinking as well like the film itself when i was trying to write it so i remember the in the class at university and everybody was pitching their stories which were loaded guts and drama and tarantino I'm, ripoffs i'm not gonna say that. i'm not saying that I'd say, yeah, cliched student pictures. And I sat at the back of the class and I was listening to all this. And I'm like, I haven't got any idea of what I want to do, but I know I don't want to do that. So I, was, <clears throat> I wrote a list of everything that they were saying and keeping it completely different. So I was like, right, they all want to do adult themes. So I want to do something child-based or like family-friendly. They want to do all this drama. And I was like, I want to do like an adventure or like a something uplifting or whatever, something different. Uh, and then I'd been round to see my mom. I'd been chatting to her and she was like, oh, I've got your, your granddad's book. So she gave me the book and in there was a little inscription saying, to my grandson, Keith, who is also good at telling stories. And that was then the inspiration of an older guy that could be perceived as a superhero by his young grandchild, looking at stuff like Princess Bride was an inspiration where the granddad tells the story to the grandson who imagines the world. And that's what I wanted from this, this kind of, it's a real life story to an effect of him helping somebody out. But the grandson then just goes, boom, here it is. So let's get to 